to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning. Before me, the world behind me, the cross before me, the world behind me, the cross before me, the world behind me, no turning back, no turning back. Well, everyone sing, I have decided. Welcome to Bethel Hour. Our ministry is a production of the Nigerian Tower of Refuge Mission, which is a mission that operates in Nigeria with its headquarters right here in the United States. Uh, it's a nonprofit, non governmental, faith based, uh, charitable organization operating to feed the poor, especially widows and orphans. We took our name, Nigerian Tower of Refuge Mission, from, the, uh, uh, from Proverbs 18.10. Actually, the Lord gave us that name. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it, and they are safe. That's what we want to do. We want the name of the Lord in Nigeria to be a strong tower that poor people, orphans, widows can run into and be saved. Uh, we take care of the physical needs of, of these poor people who are also who could also be us, but for the grace of the Lord, that could be us. Uh, we also proclaim the Lordship of the Lord Jesus Christ to them and to anybody that the Lord sends us to. The program here, uh, um, uh, Bethel Hour, is one of those productions. There's also something else that we do uh, in Nigeria to win souls of those that we feed. So we're not just feeding them physically, we're also feeding them spiritually. Uh, our mandate here is to feed the heart. Our mandate is to feed the, the temple of the Lord, Bethel, the house of the Lord that is in our, uh, in our heart so that we can renew our minds constantly. We can, we, uh, uh, our life can be transformed when we renew our hearts constantly, and the Lord will help us to do so. So why do we do this? Why are we feeding fido, uh, widows, especially when things are so tough for, for, for us also? Right now, we do not have any, uh, uh, any support from anybody, but why do we do that? It's a mandate from the Lord. You can see it in the book of Matthew. If you go to Nigeria and you see that Nigerians are very happy people. They're very jovial people. But the people who can afford to feed three meals a day are about 1% of the population. So there's, there are a lot of widows. There are a lot of uh, 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 fatherless and motherless people. A lot of orphans struggling, especially with Boko Haram, especially with the Fulani herdsmen killing, with, uh, and nobody stopping them from from doing so, and especially with ritual killing. This is why we do what we do, and the Word of God tells us that for as much as we feed, as much as we do this for the least of uh, of, of of God's brethren, of Jesus Christ's brethren. We are doing it for him. That is why we do that. Our partner here for this program, Bethel R, is Dayo Agbola. Dayo, we call him Babalunta, and we want to say thank you, Dayo. When the role is, uh, is called in heaven, your name will be among those that will be saved in Jesus' mighty name. Uh, today, the Spirit is leading us to share with you kiss and made up, uh, makeup. Kiss and makeup. Don't smile, don't laugh. This comes from the heart of God. The anchor that we are going to use, the, the scripture we're going to use is taken from the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 33. I'm just going to read the first 11 verses and then we'll take it from there. This is the story of, uh, of uh, Jacob and Esau when they met and they reconciled. Now, Jacob lifted his eyes and looked, and there Esau was coming, and with him were 400.
hundred men. So he divided the children among Leah, Rachel, and the two maid servants. And he put the maid servants and their children in front, Leah and her children behind, and Rachel and Joseph last. Then he crossed over before them and bowed himself to the ground seven times until he came near to his brother. But Esau ran to meet him, and he embraced him, and he fell on his neck, and he kissed him, and they wept. And he lifted his, lifted his eyes and saw the women and the children and said, Who are these with you? So he said, The children whom God has graciously given your servant. Then the maid servants came near, they and their children, and they bowed down. And Leah also came near with her children, and they bowed down. After that, Joseph and Rachel came near, and they bowed down. Then Esau said, What do you mean by all this company which I met? And he said, These are to find favor in the sight of my Lord. But Esau said, I have enough, my brother. Keep what you have for yourself. And Jacob said, no, please. If I have found favor in your sight, then receive my present from my hand in as much as I have seen your face as though I have seen the face of God and you were pleased with me. Please take my blessing that is brought to you because God has dealt graciously with me and because I have enough. So he urged him, and he took it. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come to you this evening. And we're asking in the name of Jesus, Father, that you will remove me and bring yourself up, be lifted high, and speak to your children today. Everybody uh, who would hear my voice today, who would see this video, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, Father, that you will speak directly to their hearts, especially when it comes to uh, kissing and making up. Father God, this is in your heart, and you want us to share this with your, with, with your children. I pray in the name of Jesus, Father, that every ear, every eye that we see and hear would take this to heart. And they will be able to go to whomever they need to settle accounts with so that you, we, we may gladden your heart because it is your will, Father, that we should forgive those who trespass against us. Father, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be accept acceptable before you today, my Lord, my God, my Redeemer, and my Rock. Thank you, Father, for what you will say today. As I open my mouth, Father, I ask in the name of Jesus that you will take over. For in Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed. Amen. Kiss and make up. It sounds like the kind of thing you would tell children who are angry with each other, doesn't it? Uh, we tell our children, stop doing that. Stop fighting. Now, hug each other. Kiss and make up. But this is actually a topic that the Lord from his heart gave me to share with you today. Uh, it, 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 it is a precept that must uh, be extremely important to God for him to want us to spend a whole hour on this kind of topic. And you, 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 you know in the book of Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 29, 29, the secret things belong to the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong to us and to our children forever. So there's a secret importance about kissing and making up that many Christians are not able to really phantom or really understand. But he's actually allowing us now, God is actually allowing us now to see this secret and to share this secret. Jesus shines a light on the importance of, of, of this topic in the Lord's Prayer. You, will, you see it in, in the book of Matthew, chapter 6, verses. I just want to read verses uh, uh, 12 and 13 to you. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. 
and do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. In the book of Luke, Luke this, uh, 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 reported it a little differently. He says, and forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who is indebted to us. So as you can see, it, this means that our forgiveness is predicated on our ability to forgive others. When we want God to forgive us, and we have discussed this in this program so many times, but for some reason God wants us to, to, to focus exclusively on this. Our forgiveness, when we want God to forgive us of our sins, when we read the Lord's Prayer, we are actually agreeing that we will receive forgiveness the way we have forgiven others. Amen? Uh, it means that we can e easily be led into evil if we have an unforgiving heart. It's so very easy to be led into evil. You remember it says, and lead us not into evil. Lead us not into, do not allow the evil one to take over. You know, this is one area that Christians are very weak in. Our weakness as Christian is in learning to forgive and forget. Uh, you've heard people say it, especially in my culture. People will say, well, he doesn't feed me. I don't feed him. So what do I need him for? What do I need her for? Uh, I, I, I don't need to talk or to deal with them. And you've heard some people to say, oh, when we get to heaven, we'll deal with it. Who tells you that you'll be able to speak? Remember that song? I can only imagine. Will I even be able to speak at all when I get before the throne of the Almighty? If the word of God says that there's no repentance in the grave. So if you wait until you get to heaven, it's too late. It is too late. You, uh, you, when, when you say people don't feed you, that is, that is our arrogance speaking. That is our person uh, uh, speaking. So today we're going, to, uh, we're going to use two, uh, three stories from the scripture to illustrate what happens with those who kiss and make up and those who say, no, I hate you. So I don't want to have anything to do with you. The first two you are very familiar with. So we're going to take the, the, uh, the story of Jacob and Esau that we just read. Uh, if, you, if you remember, Jacob did some horrible things to, to Esau. On his own accord, on his own accord, he manipulated Esau to release his birthright as the firstborn. They were twins, but it was Esau that came out first before Jacob came out. In fact, the word of God says that, that they had been struggling from the womb, so much so that when they were born, they said that Jacob actually held on to the heel of Esau. And you know, the amazing thing was that even his name, uh, uh, Jacob, means the supplanter. What a name to give a child. No wonder God, is, God, God eventually changed his name. So when they became teenagers, he, he, he manipulated his brother to take some portage, some portage in exchange for his birthright. And then not only that, their mother, uh, 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 um, Rebecca, now connived with, uh, with Jacob to get the blessing that belonged to the firstborn. So much so that Esau was ready to kill, uh, 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 to kill uh, Jacob. Now you wonder why Jacob ran away to his uncle. And if you know the story of his life with his uncle, you know that he, he, he ripped what he sowed. You, you know that he worked for seven years to marry Rachel, only to be given Leah. And then he was forced to work another seven years before he could marry uh, um, uh, 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 Rachel. So a man who only wanted one wife actually ended up with four because the, the, the two sisters began to, uh, 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 to rival each other and they were using their maids as, as pawns to win the favor of Jacob. So Jacob received uh, the, the just uh, cause of what he sowed. However, it was time now for him to go back home. He had been running away from his brother. He ran away successfully, had children. But at this point, the only child that was not born was, uh, was Benjamin. 
So you know that story well. But what did he do? He repented. He knew going home meant that he had to face his twin brother. So he repented. He took from his, uh, 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 from his herds, from, his, uh, 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 from, from, from the herds that, that, he, that he had acquired, he took from them what he was going to give as, as gifts to his brother. And he sent that, uh, uh, those ahead of, of him. And then he divided his children up. He divided his family up. That if, if in case my my brother get, gets upset and kills me, uh, so somebody, maybe I will have a few left. He did not know what to expect from his brother. But one thing that is very important was that Jacob knew how to repent. You saw his repentance in the way he divided the herds, in the way he divided his, his, the animals that he was going to give to his brother as, as, as peace offering. You saw his, 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 his submission when he went to a, a, a desolate place to pray before he, before he faced his, his brother. And then the word of God that we read said that he bound himself seven times. Can you imagine? He bowed himself, got up, Rant bowed himself seven times. Not only that, he made his children bow before before Esau. But look at the way Esau responded to him. This is the part of it that that boggled my mind. Esau Esau forgot all the things that he had done to him. Remember, they shared the same womb. They grew up together. They were the only two sons of of, of Isaac. And wh uh, 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 what happened? He ran to his brother. He ran to his brother. He hugged him. He laid his head on him. He kissed him. He kissed him. He was happy to see him. He forgot all everything else. Yes, Jacob repented. But Esau forgave. Esau forgave. He kissed and made up. He kissed and made up. Unfortunately, his generation after him did not behave towards the generations of Jacob the same way. But we are looking at this story from kissing and making up. We see in the story that Jacob knew how to repent and Esau knew how to forgive. Esau forgave his brother. If you read the story, excuse me, if you read the story to the end, you will see that Esau even offered to, 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 to leave some of his own men to help Jacob. And just said, don't worry about it. We should be okay. If I, if, if, if I drive this herd too hard, I might lose all of them. You go ahead. I'll meet you in Montsier. It's no big deal. So they became friends. He even knew where he was going to, uh, to meet up with him. So this is extremely important. And, and uh, re remember what Jesus Christ said in his ministry. In, in, in Matthew chapter 18, Jesus said, uh, um, actually, let, let us look at uh, Luke first before we look at Matthew. Luke 17. Luke 17. Uh, uh, Luke reported Jesus saying that, take heed to yourself from verse, I just want to read verses 3 and 4. He says, take heed to yourself. If your brother sins against you, rebuke him and if he repents forgive him and if he sins against you seven times in one day and seven times in that day he comes back to ask for forgiveness saying i repent you should forgive him think about that do you know how many times you forgive uh, you, you you offend god every day and Jesus is saying, if a single person offends you and you tell him, brother, sister, what you're doing to me, I don't like it. This is how it makes me feel. Oh, they say, I'm so sorry. I didn't know about that. Do you know there are some people like that? They don't even know they're doing anything wrong. And each time they, they, you, you tell them, say, oh, really? I did that. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, I'm so sorry. And if they say, I'm so sorry, seven times, you can say, oh boy, you said I'm so sorry six times and you did it again. And they say, I'm so sorry. The Lord says, forgive them. Let it, let it go. Let it go. Even behave as if they had not done anything at all. The word of God says that the sins that we sin are, are, are kept in the, in the sea of forgetfulness. When God will say, what sin? I, I don't, I forgo I've forgotten your sin. The sin the, the, your, it, it, it could be as red as crimson. I will wash you whiter than snow. 
That is the God we serve. I don't know how that story linked together between uh, uh, the, what Luke reported and what Matthew reported. But in Matthew, it, it was said that Peter came to Jesus and asked him, you know, how often should I forgive my brother? Seven times? Could it be because he had heard Jesus say, if somebody comes seven times and, and they ask for forgiveness, you should forgive them? I don't know that. But Peter is now saying, is seven times the, the, the magic number now? If people offend us seven times, you know, we should just forgive, the, forgive them in one day? How many people can offend you seven times in one day unless they're toddlers? Unless they're toddlers. You know toddlers, don't do that, they will do it. Don't do that, they will do it. Do you throw your toddler away? Do you spank your toddler every time they offend you? Abs absolutely not. And that is the way God sees us. We are the toddlers in his hands. But now Peter is asking Jesus, what it, uh, should, should, should seven be our magic number? But listen to what Jesus said. Jesus said in verse 22 of, uh, of uh, Matthew uh, 18, Jesus said to him, I do not say seven times, but up to 70 times seven times. In our lifetime, is there somebody in your life that can offend you 70 times seven times? Think about that. And many of us, after two or three things, oh, that's it. You know, in fact, you hear people say, uh, uh, once beaten, twice shy. They, they, they've done that to me once. I'm not giving them another opportunity to do it to me again a second time. But Jesus is saying, make it 70 times seven times. And that was what happened in, 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 in the scenario that's uh, 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 between Jacob and uh, Esau. Now, let me tell you a, a, a modern-day story of that uh, 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 equivalent of that story in the New Testament. We know the story of the prodigal son. This is not a story between two brothers now. This is a story between a father and a son. Did this boy do something wrong? Absolutely. His father was still alive, and now he's saying to, to his dad, Dad, I want my portion of, 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 of my inheritance. I want it now. Usually an inheritance is something you inherit after the, in, uh, 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 the owner dies. While his father was still alive, this young man, the younger of two boys, wanted his, his portion of his father's wealth. You've seen it in a modern day. There are children who actually kill their parents because they want uh, 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 they want the inheritance and they want it fast. This young man was bold. He went to his father, told his father, I want my inheritance now. And his father didn't argue. Okay, if that's what you want, you can have it. His father divided his, his, his uh, uh, wealth into two, gave half to this brother. The word of God tells us in the book of Luke chapter 15 that this young man went to a, a big city and began to live larger than life. He began to spend his money any which way he wanted. He, the, he, the word of God even says that he spent it on harlotry. So he, was, he, he, he had so several women around him. He, he, he was one of those people that would, go to, that would go to the bar and say, serve everybody. So they will serve them, he, he will pay the money because he did not work for that money. That was daddy's money that he was spending any old how. And then th the word of God said there was a farming in that man. And then he, was, he, he began to be in want. So let us take that story from, the, uh, uh, from verse uh, 17. I want to read a few verses to you about the repentance of this uh, silly boy. But when... He came to himself after he's been poor. He was, he, he was actually working for a, a, a pilgrim, a Jew working for a pilgrim, a, a, a pilgrim. You know it's, a really an, it's, it's an abomination. He, the word of God says he even wanted to eat some of the slop that the pigs were eating. But when he came to himself, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. 
and I'm no longer worthy to be yours, to be called your son. Make me one of your hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But while he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion on him. And he ran and he fell on his neck and he kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. And I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, bring out the best robe and put it on him and put on a ring on his hand and hand sandals on his feet and bring the fatted cow here and kill it and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to be merry. Think about it. While he, was a, while he was a way off, while he was far away from the father, in which case the father had been watching out, waiting, wondering, when would this boy come back? You know, the father knew that it was only a matter of time before he spent all that, uh, all that money foolishly. When would this boy come back? Would he come back? Would he have enough courage to come back? Would he have enough humility to come back? As soon as he saw him afar off, most likely that boy had lost a lot of weight. Most likely his clothes were a, a little worn. Most likely he, 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 he was walking with his head bowed down. But daddy recognized him. He recognized him and everything he did, most likely the first few weeks of his departure, the father was probably furious. How dare he? I'm still alive and he, he, he wanted me to give him a, a, his inheritance. And I can't believe I actually let him have it. But over the years, over the months, the anger withered. The anger uh, uh, disappeared and he was waiting for him. While he was still afar off, they said the father ran. He ran and he, uh, and he, he fell on his neck. Just like, uh, just like Esau fell on uh, Jacob's neck. He fell on his neck and he kissed him. And he said, I don't want to hear all your stories. You're not a servant. You're my, you're my son. You, you were dead, but now you are alive. Immediately, he forgave. He forgave without turning around. He forgave without wondering uh, 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 about, uh, 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 about what else should I do to this boy. He, there, there is more to the story, but we, we are not interested in the way the younger brother, uh, the older brother reacted uh, 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 to the return of, the, uh, uh, of, 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 of his younger brother. We are concerned about the forgiveness of the father. This is how God forgives us. This is how he forgives us. We mess up. We make mistakes. We, 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 we do things in vainglory. We, we do things that, that, that are an abomination. That is why he says that you cannot be righteous before me because all of your righteousness are like filthy rags before me. What we're enjoying today is, 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 is the righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ that, that wraps around us. So every time God sees us, he sees the blood. He sees Jesus Christ. He sees the, the Lamb of God who was slain. And he forgives readily. In the two stories that, 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 that I shared with you, you can see that there was ready forgiveness. There was kissing and making up. Especially the one that was offended. The ones, the, the ones that, were, that were offended were the ones that ran and were willing to forgive without even waiting for the apology. They were not even waiting for the apology. Yes, the offending partners, the, 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 the brother that offended, the son that offended, yes, they, they, they went with, with, the, with the intention of being repentant. They went with the repentant spirit. But the one who was giving the forgiveness did not even wait to hear about the repentance. They were just too eager to forgive. They were just eager to welcome. They were just eager to, uh, 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 to, to bring back into the fold. 
And that was what that is what the father wants us to do. That is why he's asking us to spend this hour talking about forgiving, about about kissing and making up. It's about, you know, let go, let go, let God, let go, let God. If anybody can offend you uh, 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 70 times, seven times, what is the big deal about somebody who has offended you two or three times? That some of you stay up all night wondering how best to get revenge. The third story that I want to tell us tonight is, uh, uh, today is, is, is the story that is a little different. It is the story of hatred and unforgiveness that led to death. The story of, 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 of hatred and of, of, of forgiveness that led to death. Let me tell you something. When you don't like somebody, even if they have something to tell you that could save your life, because you don't like them, you will not listen. You will not listen to what they have to say. Even before they open their mouths, you have already turned them away. Why? Because you don't like them. And sometimes the, it, it, your redemption might be put in the hand of that person that you do not like. Sometimes your, inab your ability to save your neck might be put into the hand of the person you do not like. So I'm going to tell you the story about King Ahab and uh, one, of his, uh, uh, one of the prophets, Micaiah. In case you don't remember Ahab, Ahab is, a, is that king of, of uh, Israel who was the husband of Jezebel. Ahab was the king who took the vineyard of Naboth and killed him over it through the hands of his wife, Jezebel. Ahab uh, 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 was the one God said in the same location that the dogs licked the blood of Naboth that you killed for his vineyard. I will make sure that dogs will lick your own blood too. It is that same Ahab and that same Jezebel whom the Lord used uh, 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 um, Jehu to destroy. That is the story of, of, of King, the King Ahab that I want to tell you. Um, that king got away with, uh, with killing uh, Naboth and, and continued to, uh, to reign. The, 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 the issue about le letting go and letting God is that when God fights, he does exceedingly abundantly. He fights more for you than you can fight for yourself. In the Yoruba culture, in my culture, they call him the one who fights for you and, and makes you afraid for the victim. When God fights for you, he makes you afraid for the person that God is fighting on your behalf. That you say, oh daddy, th that punishment is a little too much. So what happened to this man? This, let, let, let me quickly read uh, from verses 1 through 8. And I want us to pay attention to verse 8 uh, in the book of First King chapter 22. First King chapter 22. I just want to read the first eight verses. I will switch from six, uh, to, uh, to 16, and then we will talk about, uh, uh, about King Ahab. First King 22, 1 through 8. Now, three years passed without war between Syria and Israel. Then it came to pass in the third year that Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, went down to visit the king of Israel. And the king of Israel said to his servants, Do you know that Ramoth in Gilead is ours? But we hesitate to take it out of the hand of the king of Syria. So he said to Jehoshaphat, Will you go with me to fight at Ramoth Gilead? Jehoshaphat said to the king of Israel, the king of Judah said to the king of Israel, I am as you are, my people as your people, my horses as your horses. Also Jehoshaphat said to the king of Israel, Please, inquire for the word of the Lord today. In which case, before we do this, before we go out, what does the Lord say? Let us not take a step before God. What does the Lord say? So he said, So uh, 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 then the king of Israel gathered the prophets together, about 
400 men and said to them, Shall I go to Ramoth Gilead to fight or shall I refrain? So they said, 400 people at once said, Go up, for the Lord will deliver it into the hands of the king. And Jehoshaphat said, Is there not still a prophet of the Lord here that we may inquire of him? Something was fishy here. Look at verse 8. So the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, There's still one man, Michael, the son of Imlah, by whom we can inquire of the Lord. But I hate him, because he does not prophesy good concerning me, but evil. And Jehoshaphat said, Let not the king say such a thing. In which case, this man uh, uh, collected 400 people but left the one man whom God speaks to for him, he left him out. And 400 men speak the same thing. When you consider the, the, the law of, of two or three, by the mouth of two or three people you establish the truth. This is 400 prophets. But something was not right with Jehoshaphat. Remember Judah obeyed God when uh, uh, um, Israel you know, did whatever they liked. They were they were both Israelites, but during after the after the reign of um, of Solomon, the the, the, the the nation was divided into two, and only Judah and Benjamin were together, and the rest uh, belonged uh, 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 were together with uh, with um, uh, in Ju uh, with um, uh, with Israel. So now, Jehoshaphat, who was obedient to God, felt something was wrong. And he said, isn't there another, th uh, an, another uh, uh, prophet that we could inquire from? He said, yes, there is. Uh, there's even a really good one, but I don't like him. I hate him. Can you imagine a king say, saying to a, a subject, I hate you? He said, why? Why do you hate him? Because every time he prophesies, he doesn't prophesy good. But isn't a prophecy what comes out of the mind of God to you? Let's jump to verse 16 real quick because it's a long story. So the king said to him, that is to uh, uh, Micaiah, how many times shall I make you swear that you will tell me nothing but the truth in the name of the Lord? Okay, you want the truth? Now I'm going to tell the, tr the truth. Then Micaiah said uh, uh, to the king, I saw all Israel scattered on the mountains as sheep that have no shepherd. And the Lord said, these have no master. Let each return to his house in peace. And the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, Did I not tell you he would not prophesy good concerning me but evil? Did I not tell you he would not prophesy anything good but evil? It, it got to a stage that even some of the, uh, the 400 uh, 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 prophets began to become very uh, belligerent uh, uh, against Micaiah. And Micaiah, in fact, one of them slapped him and said, how can the Spirit of God leave me and come to you? So everybody, everybody spoke in one voice. But the word of God says that the, 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 the real issue was that God himself put a lying spirit into the mouths of these prophets because it was time for him to deal with, uh, 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 with Ahab the way he dealt with uh, uh, Naboth. But Ahab didn't know that. The man who knew that, you don't want to hear what he has to say. And he's saying to, 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 to uh, and he said to uh, uh, his, his, his men, put this man in jail. Let him stay in jail and only give him water and bread until I come back. And he turned to around and said to him, if you turn, if you come back with the, from this battle, if you go to this battle with uh, uh, Ramoth Gilead and you come back, then it's, it's not God who spoke to me. And he said, put him in jail. I'm going to come back. Indeed, he did not come back. He was killed in battle. And on the same ground that the blood of, uh, uh, of uh, Naboth uh, 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 spilled and the dog licked, it is, was the same ground when they washed the chariot of the king that, go, that dogs gathered around and licked the blood. But do you know what is, what is so sad about this story? Because Ahab hated Micaiah, 
he did not heed his warning. Because Ahab hated Micaiah, uh, 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 Micaiah, he did not heed his warning. He listened to the 400 prophets afflicted with lying spirit instead. His anger against Micaiah caused him his death. Have you ever seen a situation when you are angry at one person? I know for a fact, anytime you are, you are not at peace with somebody, every time they come by you, your heart goes, you, 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 your heart sinks. Imagine if you, if you have that kind of uh, behavior towards three or four people, and every time they go past you, your heart is, is sinking. How well is that for your heart? Uh, 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 for, uh, for your blood pressure. How easy is that for your blood pressure? You have to be aware that when you hate, you are closing the door for opportunities to reconcile. Doesn't the word of God say, be angry and do not sin? We see it in the book of, of, of Psalm, Psalm 4. Psalm 4 verses 4 and 5 says, be angry and sin not. Meditate within your heart on your bed and be still. Offer the sacrifices of righteousness and put your trust in the Lord. When you are angry at one person, you are angry at a creature of God. And when you are angry at a creature of God, God is not happy with you. Because he created us in his image and you are angry at his image. When you are angry and you, you look for ways to recompense, you look for ways to retaliate, you look for ways to, uh, uh, you don't sleep, you look for ways to, how can, I, how can I put the monkey back on their back? How can I get back at them? When you do that, you are not just being angry, you are also committing sin. Let me repeat that. When you spend time looking for a way to get back at somebody who has offended you, rather than forgiving them, rather than kissing and making up, you are creating a situation for yourself that leads to sin. Remember the word, of, uh, uh, the word in the Lord's Prayer, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from the evil one. When you are angry at all times, you are being delivered into the hands of the evil one. So, but what about those who do not apologize or repent? In the first story, the story of, of uh, 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 Jacob and Esau, Jacob repented. And he bowed down seven times. And he was ready to, to roll on the floor if need be. But the brother hugged him and kissed him and, uh, and made up with him. In the second story, the, the, brother, uh, the, 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 the young man was ready to say, Father, I have sinned against you. I'm not worthy to be your son. Please make me a servant. I will work for you. And the father forgot all of that and, and, and ran and, and fell on his neck and kissed him. In those two stories, people were willing to They were willing to uh, um, apologize. They were willing to repent. But what if they do not want to repent? What if they offend you and they do not want to repent? There are maybe two, uh, two occasions. One, they may not even know that what they did was wrong. Sometimes we, we, we get angry at people who are, who are ignorant of what they've done to us. They, they might have just done it casually and carelessly without realizing that they, they offended you. That is why Jesus asked us to tell people if they offend us. You know, uh, 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 and uh, if you look at that uh, chapter 18 of the book of Matthew that we read, I want us to look at verses 15 and se uh, uh, through 17 to hear what Jesus Christ is saying from verse 15. Moreover, if your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he hears you, you've gained your brother back. But if he does not hear... Take with you one or two more people that, that by the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. And if he refuses to hear them, tell it to the church. But if he refuses even to hear the church, 
The word of God says, let him be to you like a heathen and a tax collector. But make it your duty to call him. You know, uh, uh, in my culture, they will say, they will say, if if if, if you offend me and I and I tell you about it, that is the what we need. That is what we need for a, a good friendship. If I offend you, tell me. If, if you offend me, I'll tell you. That is the, that is wh how, what we need to do to, to to remain friends. But when you don't tell people, they may not know that they did anything wrong. Now. If it, it happened in an argument and they insulted you or they did something wrong and they lied against you or whatever, and you tell them, why did you lie against me? That was not right. If they agree and say, oh, I do apologize, I'm sorry, let it, be, let it go. That's the end of the story. They're your friends again. Remember what Jesus said? Seventy times, seven times. Let it go. Now, if however you say, you told them and they say, no, I'm not sorry. What are you talking about? I didn't do anything wrong. Take two more people with you and say, please, so so person did this. And I'm not happy. I don't want it to go like that because it might affect the way I, I, I treat them. And they said, get away from me. I don't want to have anything to do with it. That means they're not ready to repent. The word of God says, take it to the church. Go to the pastor. Talk to the pastor. Let the pastor talk to them. If they then refuse to do that, you have done what is your right to do. You've done what is in your power to do. Even Jesus himself says, let it be to you like a heathen, like an unbeliever. Leave him alone. So Jesus himself, you say, uh, 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 said in verse 43 of uh, Matthew chapter 5, you have heard what was said. You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you. And pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. That you may be sons of your fathers in heaven. For he makes the sun to rise on the evil and on the good. And sends rain on the just and on the just. For if you love those who, you, if you love, those who love you, what reward have you? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? If you greet those brethren only, what do you, uh, 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 what, let me take that again. And if you greet your brethren only, what do you do more than others? Do not even the tax collectors do so? Therefore, you shall be perfect just as your father in heaven is perfect. So, would you say that what Jesus is saying there contradicts what he said before. No. Leave that person alone. Treat them as, you know, as tax collectors. But don't hate them. Every time you go past them, hello, brother, go about your business. They are, in fact, because they don't like you, because you call the pastor on them or whatever, they may not even greet you. But if they're hungry, the word of God says, you should, you know, you should feed them. You know, our, our prayers, the, 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 what we the reason why it is important for us when it is uh, 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 within our power to keep peace with our brothers and sisters is because of the sacrifice that we bring, because of our prayer before the Lord. Our prayer and sacrifices must be presented in righteousness. Remember, uh, 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 don't uh, 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 be angry, but don't sin not. Bring your, bring your uh, a sacrifice with righteousness. In Matthew 5, 23 to 24, it says, If you bring your gift to the altar, and then you remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there bef before the altar and go to your way. Find and reconcile with your brother, and then come and offer your gift. If you, if, if you leave that person as a, a tax collector and, and, you don't, and, and, and you don't pray for them or, 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 or wish them well or whatever, you are looking for trouble. If you don't tell them that they offend you and you bring your gift to the altar, that gift will not be acceptable before the Lord. So we need to understand. Even Apostle Paul admonishes us in the book of Romans chapter 12. I want to read uh, a few verses, 17 through 21. He, say, he says, repay no evil for evil. Have regard for good things uh, uh, in the sight of all men. Look at this. 
if it is possible, as much as, as, much as it depends on you, live peaceably with all men. Beloved, do not avenge yourself, but rather give place to wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Therefore, this is very important, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him to drink. For in so doing, you will heap coals of fire on his head. This is somebody that doesn't like you. But there's an opportunity for them uh, uh, to get a job. Tell that, it, it, announce it where everybody can hear it, that there's an opportunity for a job. If they want that job, they've heard it from you. You know, do not be overcome by evil. Very important. But overcome evil with good. You cannot do tit for tat. God does not want us to do tit for tat. He wants us to, to, uh, to reconcile. He wants us to live at peace with each other. He wants us to give good things to those who do not deserve it. Just as he gives the sun to everybody and he gives the rain to everybody. Just as he uh, allows everybody to enjoy his blessings. There are certain things that the Lord will hold you responsible for. But there are some things that he gives to everybody. This is why it is extremely important to kiss and make up. Very, very important to kiss and make up. Is there somebody that you are angry at? Is there somebody you've not spoken to in two weeks, in three weeks, in a year? Somebody that you have said, oh, we'll settle it in heaven? Look for them. You never know. This might be your opportunity before the Lord calls you home. He does not promise us tomorrow. Let's live a life as if tomorrow we, will, we, will, we may not be here. And what is more important, for you to win an argument on earth or for you to, uh, 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 to be with your father in heaven? What is more important? Remember, eternity is for everybody. What is different is where we will spend eternity. Are you going to spend eternity with those whom God says, depart from me, for I know you not? Or are you going to spend eternity from your father, which is in heaven, who has said, kiss and make up. Live, let live. Don't revenge. Let God take the vengeance. Amen. That is where we're going to end tonight. Amen. Now. Unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his throne with exceeding great joy. To our only wise God, our Savior, be all glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you. I have decided to follow Jesus I have decided to follow Jesus I have decided to follow Jesus no turning back no turning back the cross before me the world behind the cross before me the world behind me the cross before me the world behind me no turning back no turning back when everyone sing I have decided I have decided to follow